Okay, 21002. Write a loop that reads positive integers from standard input, printing out those values that are greater than 100, each followed by a space that terminates when it reads an integer that is not positive. Declare any variables that are needed. Assume the availability of a variable stdin that references a scanner object associated with the standard input. So we want to read integers forever or until the user enters a negative integer. And if they enter an integer greater than 100, we're going to print that. So they print 101, that we print it. We print 34. We don't do anything, but we continue. 566. We print 506, oh, with a space. 566. But then if we print a negative 4, and we end the process. So that's the setup of what we want. The way to do that, before we get into the mechanics, we'll talk about Java Util Scanner. If you don't know this class, it's an important one for getting user input. This is how we read stuff for, that the user says through the keyboard. This we import. Inside the main method, we will make an object called, traditionally called STDIN. You can call it something else, but you might not want to just to be consistent. So this is how you make an object. You declare it as a new object and the input is system.in, which is the keyboard. STDIN is then the object and it has a lot of methods. We're only going to be using one for this, but it has tons of methods. This one is next int. It means read read what the user says and it's going to be an integer. So if it's going to make a, a window pop up or a, a input box pop up, the user could enter a non-integer and that will cause an error, but you're telling it it's going to be an integer. So we're not going to deal with the error, but know that it will allow for, it, it will cause an error. It doesn't force it to, it doesn't force it to be an integer. It, it won't allow it to continue to enter until you get to an integer. It will take whatever is entered and it will be an integer. If it's not, there'll be an error because it will try to treat it as an integer. And then most importantly for this exercise is the do while loop, which is what we're going to get into in the exercise. So we have, we have a setup before we actually write the loop. Um, we import the scanner class. This is done outside the exercise. So it's just how you would deal with the scanner. And then the scanner is, is declared here which is a how this statement can be true. So we're assuming it, by assuming it, we've written it. Um, or by writing it, we've assumed it. So before we plug it in, let's do a general do while loop. Do this, do what I say while while this is true. The difference between a do while loop and just a while loop is that the do will be done at least once. So before it even encounters the while, it will do it. And this is important in cases where you want I guess maybe a lot of cases, but certainly in this one where you want to give it a chance first and then and then test it over and over again or potentially over and over again. But you need that first case to get the loop started. So what do we want to do? We want to read 
we want to read a number as a we want to read a number from the user so we want to get a number now we we haven't declared this number so let's declare this it's an integer int number we i think well no we can't we need to declare it before the loop because if we declared it here then we would be redeclaring it if we went back through it so we need to declare it before we get inside the loop so we now have an integer now what do we want to do with that integer well if it's positive if it's greater than 100 we want to print it with a space so oh if number is is it equal to greater than 100 strictly greater than 100 system dot out print number plus the space let me clean this a little. So we want to do that so long as they don't enter a negative number. So that is what goes in the while part. While number is greater than or equal to zero. So that's the advantage of the do while loop. We get to establish the, the number before we test its value. And it's a, it's a quirky little thing, but it's, it's very advantageous to have this do while loop. You can do things, you could do this without the do while loop, but you would have to have a bunch of stuff before you'd have to basically have establish a uh, a number equals you'd have to do this once in before the loop and then have a while loop so it's just a, a cleaner way to do this process of when you have to do it once at least and then you want to iterate it uh, conditionally by some condition. So the final, I think the final exercise wants this as an answer, but let us give it a test. Oh, like I said, we don't want to declare it. We have declared it outside. So let's see if it will allow us to input stuff. So 33 it should do nothing because it's not less than 100. So let's do 303. It prints it and you can't see a space, but it's hopefully there. Uh, 3000. It keeps asking us. 12 does nothing. 100. It's not greater than 100. 101. 1. What if we do negative 1, negative 7? It kills it. That killed the loop. Um, we didn't deal with... I mentioned in the beginning that it doesn't wait for an integer, so we could enter a string like k, but that will cause an error. It will kill the, kill the process, but it'll, it'll have an error. Uh, we didn't deal with that, but this re this program doesn't require it. But we'll, we can get into that um, later down the down the road. So thank you very much.